So now we've laid out our model, we've prepared our model, and now we're ready for export. So I'm gonna click the export button and some of the stuff we've already talked about in the previous videos, but let's just go down the list here. So we have split. And if I take this clipping here, you'll see what that does. So basically this will just toggle through split is the top and this will just show you the top areas or you can show both with the clip line kind of clipping through your model. So you can see the model and the orange supports top and bottom at the same time. And then you just click this again. And now you're just seeing the top here. We're in object mode. So you can go through here and select these individual objects if you want. Although really what we're doing in the export section is just getting these things prepared for the 3d printer. If you want to see what it's going to send out, you can go over here to slice and this will put an image over your model. So as you're slicing through your model, you're going to see exactly what's being sent to the printer, which is your object and your supports. Now the supports will be presumably white on export, but what it's doing is it's sending these images. It's going to be several thousand images. So your printer is going to look at these images and then based on your resin settings, it's going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to go down. I'm going to expose a very thin layer of resin using this image. I'm going to lift up a little bit and then I'm going to go back down just one layer above and expose this next image and expose this next image. And it's going to keep doing that process until everything is exposed and printed out all the way through with your supports. If you want to just see the picture, it basically just goes to a top view. And then now you can see just the slice information that's happening. And like we did before, we can go to the simulator and this will show you exactly how this thing is going to look as it's printing out your file. So it's going to print your base first. And again, those longer exposure times at the bottom, and then it's going to start printing up and it's going to go down and print. And that's going to lift up a little bit and then go back down. And as it lifts up, you'll hear a little kind of little, little plastic tearing sound. Uh, it's not really tearing. It's just your FEP sheet, your plastic sheet that's sitting over your LED screen, curing the resin and then your resin your cured resin is going to lift off so it, it detaches from the FEP and then it's going to go back down and print out the next layer. Detach, go back down and print the next layer. Detach all the way through the process. Or if you rotate down to the bottom, you're going to see those are your slice layers. So all of this stuff, there's your base being printed, exposed for 20 seconds a piece. And then after it gets past the first three layers, then it's only going to expose for two seconds. And then this is going to be boop, 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 print, 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 print. All of these image files are going to be printed in your resin. And if you do at scale, this is going to show you the actual size of your object. And even when you're working, like say I was in ZBrush, it's a really good idea. Like we did in here, we, we did make a build volume. So if I go in here and we say transparent, here's the build volume of our asset, but even this is kind of abstract. So it might be, it might make sense for you to even make a scene like this in your 3d in your 3d file that'll just give you some real world context. So this is going to be the size of a chicken egg, you know, but while you're in here creating supports and you're in here modeling, you'll get really caught up in the details and adding all these supports and only to find out that, oh yeah, right. It's just going to be a tiny model. You know, you probably don't need to worry too much about suction or sticking because you're not really printing out super broad volumes. And so we're talking about millimeters of thickness again, but this will just put you in that real world and make you realize, okay, it's the size of a chicken egg. And if that's what you expect, good. If that's not what you expected, then you have to be like, oh, I want it to be a lot bigger. Well, you may have to print these things out in parts or individually, which luckily for you is easy. All you got to do is go back to layout, go to objects, hide the jaw or scale them both up and then just hide the one you don't want to print if they're overlapping and then just print out the skull and then print out the jaw as separate files. And that way you can scale up the skull as big as you possibly can. And if it takes up too much of the build plate where your jaw can't fit, no problem. Print out the skull, do another print with just the jaw scaled appropriately to the skull. And then you're maximizing the amount of build plate you can take up uh, just by printing out separate objects. So you don't have to fit everything on the build plate. If you can't feel free to just print one and then print the other. And then again, go through and the prepare and export. Now, speaking of export, let's go back to object mode here. We have our scene file here. We have the printer we're going to use. We have our resin settings. And because in the resin settings, again, if we go in here to edit, I did put this at say $30 US. We'll say, okay. And if I go back out of here, you're going to see, we can estimate our 3d printing time. It's going to say six hours. If we go down here to estimate resin volume, it's going to give us the resin volume for the actual model, as well as the supports and how much it'll cost out of that resin bottle. So it's in this case, it's going to be $1.75 to print this out. Now, this is really important 
how it's slicing the file and what it's sending over to the printer, it has to be in a format that that printer is going to recognize. So in this case, we're sending it over to the Nova 3D Benny 5, and that requires a CWS slice format file. If I wanted to print this out on my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, with these resin settings, I can go over here, it'll take 3 hours and 27 minutes, and it'll still cost $1.75. But you're going to see that slice format change to a CTB file. So it's sending all of these resin parameters and lift distances and exposure times along with the image files to create a slice format that your printer is going to recognize. So make sure you have your printer and your resin dialed in correctly. And then we're going to go down here to anti-aliasing. You can turn this to standard blur stroke. But I'm going to go ahead and do to standard, maybe 4x, no anti-aliasing on my supports. We're just going to save this as a file on my computer and we're going to export our slices to file. Go ahead and hit save. And these are the actual images you're sending over uh, to the 3D printer. And again, it, wherever it's white, it's going to be hardening or curing that resin on that build plate that's stuck to your plastic sheet. And then it's going to lift off and whoosh, you're going to hear it kind of pull off and it's going to unstick from the sheet. And it's going to go back down, go to the next layer, harden that resin, pull up from your FEP. And it's going to do that 1600 times and then your uh, file will be completely printed compressing, packaging, and finishing. Uh, it's all finished. You can open the folder where it saved it out as. So there's your CTB file. And this is the file you'll save. Uh, if you have a printer that'll take things over Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you can just send the file over to the printer, or you can put it on a thumb drive and go plug it into your printer and then print from that thumb drive. Now this Export 3D we've already talked about. You can, if say you wanted to send this over to another slicer or send this over back over to ZBrush and still keep playing with it, uh, you can. You can say export the file format as STL. We'll go ahead and export that. We'll just replace these ones. We'll just say skull, lychee skull. And then you also remember you can export the holes, which right now are just blocking the white areas to print as black. You can export those as a 3D file as well. So now say if we went back into ZBrush here. And we go in here to import. We'll grab the skull. And we'll go back in here to import, and we'll grab the holes. We'll drag the skull out on our canvas, and you can see we got the skull with the supports. We can go in here to subtool. We can go in here to append the holes. We'll select the holes, say subtractive, turn on live boolean, and you can't really see it, but so here's the hole back here. If I turn this hole on and off, you're gonna see it's gonna boolean, boolean through the object. And of course, we wanna slice back down through here. We can say append a cube, take this cube and you know scale it. We'll hit W so we can move it up above our object here. Scale it so it's big enough to cover the entire object. Set this one to subtractive as well. And then as we push this down through our object, this is again what it's gonna look like. It's going through the hollow areas. It's gonna hit that hole right there and you know print around it. So here's all of your object with booleans turned on. So you can see it sliced down through your file. Of course, like I said, this is just geometry. So you could send this to, like I said, another slicer or manipulate it in ZBrush, send it back into Lychee Slicer if you want. So you can, you can keep bouncing these files back and forth however you'd like uh, and do whatever you want to with them. Because essentially what you're doing is you're creating geometry that's being converted to images. So if you wanted to hollow your model out in ZBrush, you totally can. If you wanted to create your supports in ZBrush, you totally can, or whatever program you want to use. Um, or if you want to do it all in Leechy and then come in here and make any other modifications and then send it back, Leechy will go through and just ensure that all of this geometry is being converted to an image file that's going to print black or white, depending on where you want your resin cured, over and over again, layer by layer, until you're done. And then back in Leechy, down at the very bottom, you have Export Scene, Again, the light file is just going to be pointing to files on your local drive. So make sure that if you're going to send it to somebody and you want them to have access to your models, probably the easiest thing to do is just to send them an LYS file. And then you can export this here. Or you can go in here to File, Save Scene As. And I think that's it. So happy printing. Have fun creating your models and then finally printing them out. And I'll say that the Leechy Slicer has made the process of going from 3D to my printer uh, a lot less nerve-wracking. It's a lot easier to go through and get that manual control that you want and uh, kind of fine tune. And as I get, you know, again, this is going to be the first of many 3D printing videos that I put out there because we're going to have a lot more fun creating a lot more things. I know you guys are probably tired of the Gorilla Skull already, but we'll keep making more stuff. Keep looking back here for any updates they come up with. They're always coming out with uh, new cool features and new functionality and speed improvements. 
and support and more resins that you can choose that uh, have all the settings dialed in for you. Super helpful. So again, keep checking their website for updates. Keep checking back to my channel for more 3D printing stuff that we're going to be having fun with, creating on my live stream, and then printing out later. Like I said, should be a lot of fun.